during this time in the 11 year solar cycle, we're coming up towards solar maximum. So there are a lot of sunspot regions on the earth facing side of the sun. And one of these large regions uh, was positioned perfectly uh, producing flares and associated what are called coronal mass ejections, big blobs of the solar atmosphere that actually get ejected from the sun into interplanetary space. So this region has been producing lots of the solar flares, particularly strong ones, and um, ejecting blob after blob of plasma of the solar atmosphere aimed at Earth. Uh, each of these blobs carries a magnetic field and it can connect to Earth's magnetic field. And the better it connects, the better they stick together, the more energy gets transferred to our atmosphere and you get amazing aurora displays that extend normally that where they live up in Canada and, uh, and Alaska, they'll move down uh, to lower latitudes towards the equator. So we have seen reports, you know, from North Carolina and I saw it here in Colorado yesterday um, and that's just a function of uh, particles uh, from space getting trapped in our magnetic field and Earth's magnetic field and then uh, ducted right down into our atmosphere where they interact with the atoms and uh, molecules that are there and produce the aurora. The flares haven't been particularly strong, but the fact that we had a sequence, a rapid fire of all these uh, CMEs, coronal mass ejections aimed at Earth, and arriving at Earth is what drove the geomagnetic field to such an agitated state. So it's not unusual, but what made this one exciting was you had seven in a row, <laughs> um, and it's still producing them too. I mean, it's not done yet. So uh, it uh, is the biggest storm geomagnetically that we've had in about uh, 21 years. Well, it does have a, a significant impact on Earth in a variety of ways. Um, one of the ways, like you mentioned, uh, the power grid. Uh, what ends up happening is as these things slam into our magnetic field, our magnetic field starts moving. And uh, that movement will induce currents on long conductors like power lines and train tracks and pipelines. And that induced current is uh, Unwelcome, uh, unexpected. It's <laughs> they're not built to use this current, so it becomes a problem. So the power companies need to have ways to mitigate that impact. And luckily, uh, the Space Weather Prediction Center uh, has been working closely uh, with the industry and regulators uh, to help them understand what space weather is and to prepare for it. You know, by making folks aware of space weather and and by having a facility that that's our job. We keep an eye on this stuff and let people know. Um, again, uh, there are ways to try and mitigate and work around some of these things. So uh, if everything's going right, you won't notice a whole lot other than the aurora. That's the, the gift from the sun. Uh, that's <laughs> but, uh, you know, the rest of it, with any luck, uh, will be pretty low profile, at least to the average person. The fact that, you know, Two decades had passed since the last one of these, you know, technologies moved forward a lot in 20 years. And so now we can examine the uh, impacts uh, on the newer range of technology. People were aware of it and they, you know, tried to build things to mitigate these things so we can see how well those things are working and, uh, you know, what needs shoring up. Uh, so that's from a, a specifically an impact standpoint, but just from a pure science standpoint. Understanding how these things evolve and um, arrive here is fantastic. In the last big one, they didn't have the types of tools I have available in the forecast office and my forecasters can use uh, to model these storms and to predict their arrival times. And that's been huge. Uh, 